fighting happens so fast that you don't have time to think you only have time to react that's it that's there's no secret that's it you put time effort discipline training and hard work and that's how you get to the highest level that we only have one brain one way of reacting so when you fight you're going to react in a specific way according to your like i just mentioned your habits and what you know works for you Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Wing Chun by Design podcast. Today is episode 21 and I'm with Stefan and Brendan. Hi guys, how's it going? Good, Hi, Sifu. Sifu. How are you? Uh, good. So today I'm really looking forward to this conversation because we're going to be discussing Jack of all trades, master of none, because it seems to be uh, quite in style nowadays for people to bounce around different styles, uh, practicing several different arts and thinking that that's the way to go when it comes to being professional, really good at, at martial arts. So guys, who wants to start off this conversation? Yeah, I, I think there's two groups that these types of mar um, martial artists fall into. So if you've been around a martial arts, martial arts for any time, you'll see people that come in for six months to a year and they, they think they do maybe do a grading and then they think they know it and then they move on to something else. So, you know, we've known pe people that we've trained with that they've done a screamer, they've done jujitsu, they've done kyokushin and then they're just, they're adding different things to their um, resume. Just, just the other day, I uh, got this phone call, an inquiry, a dad, a parent calling for his two kids. And um, he, he says uh, he's relocated, so he's looking for another martial arts school for his kids. And I said, sure, no problems. And he says, yeah, because I want my kids uh, at the old place that were learning boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing, this and that. So I'm looking for a place like that. And I'm like... Uh, first of all, how old are your kids? Six and eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And then I'm like, well, we specialize in this, right? right. We do applied Wing Chun. It's a self-defense based martial art. But just look into our YouTube, our Instagram and have a look and see what the training is all about. And then you can, you know, mm. if you want to continue with your inquiry, then just pay us a visit or give us a call. Um, because... See, you guys have, know me that I've done other styles of martial arts when I was younger. And, but see, my mindset, my mentality when establishing the school was always to be the place to go. We specialize in applied Wing Chun and that's that. And that nowadays is actually quite uncommon to have a successful martial arts school with just the one program. Yeah. Wherever you go nowadays, if you see, you know, a busy school, it's because they've got two hours of boxing, two hours of judo, jiu-jitsu, this, that. Uh, and th that, I mean, that's, if, if you want to do that, that's fine. But as um, a martial arts school owner, uh, I wanted it to be the best place where you can learn an authentic system of martial arts it's just like when you go to the doctor you got the general practitioner but if you want to get a specific type of uh, treatment you go to the specialist yeah and you want to go to the best specialist you can find and that you can afford right <laughs> so that was my mindset when it came to teaching now from the aspect of learning yeah i see on average students nowadays train twice a week Okay, a couple of hours a week of their chosen martial art. If that's all you can spend in learning a system, then you better make sure it's just the one place because it's not enough time for you to really get the most out of your training if you're already considering trying something else. Yeah. Or if you invested that time in the one style and you thought that, oh, yeah, I've done eight months of it. I think, you know, I've mastered this. So now I'm going to go on to do something else. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. 
because fighting happens so fast that you don't have time to think, you only have time to react. And how you react is based on your habits. Yeah. And how do you build a habit, good or bad, is by repetition. So I find it quite interesting. Uh, yeah, and s- some habits conflict. Like if you're training a grappling style and a striking style, your positioning, your mechanics... Two completely different uh, ways of thinking, ways of fighting. Yeah, so... How, how you stop a jab, right? Something simple, how you stop a kick. Yeah. If you're a stand-up fighter, if you're a ground fighter, completely different uh, perspectives. Yeah. And I find it funny when I see online, say, uh, a master who says, yeah, I'm, you know, six degree, whatever, at this, and then I've done 25 years of that and this and that, and then they sell seminars where, oh, you want to learn? Yeah, I'll teach you this particular style for this seminar, next time I can teach you that and that. But, but the thing is, we only have one brain, one way of reacting. So when you fight, you're going to react in a specific way according to your, like I just mentioned, your habits and what you know works for you. So trust me, I've seen these guys who say that their masters are two, three different things and when they fight, it's just a mess yeah. because yeah. they usually cannot express their style um, effectively when it's just too much information yeah. in the and opposing in <laughs> styles. Like, but one thing I wanted to ask you is that you see a lot of these masters now, like Wing Chun masters saying you can apply Wing Chun in grappling mm. and things like that. But Wing Chun's a striking style. What do you think of when you see that? Like Wing Chun is a self-defense based martial art and it's a stand-up fighting system. Right. Do we have techniques where we can deal with someone trying to take us down? Sure. Is it something that we're going to spend a lot of time practicing and training? No, not really, because it's pretty straightforward, right? right? The moment you grab me, I don't want to grab you back because that's not my specialty. Yeah, It's like if I have um, a screwdriver and I need to use that screwdriver to save my life, I'm not going to try and, you know, lock you, grab you with that screwdriver. Mm. I'm just going to you know, use it. Well, we've got maybe kids watching this video, but uh, I'll use it in a way where I know that I'll be as effective as I can to stop you. Right. Right. So, and if we do fall, we escape, we stand. We don't want to stay We're not there. We're going to play that game. Because it's not our specialty. Yeah. Right. And at the same time, you know, there's concrete, broken glass, there's three people surrounding you. There's one guy with a bottle, one guy with a knife, and you know. And what do you do there? I'm not going to try and do a footlock on you if I know that the guy behind me wearing steel cap boots is yeah. trying to stomp on yeah. my head, right? Um, now, having said that, I'm not bagging any other martial art or any grappling so I, I love martial arts in general i'm just using it and saying this from my perspective and my expertise right, right? so it's it, it's it's unfair i think to for example have a high level muay thai fighter and say oh but yeah but i'll be doing this and taking you to the ground and if you flip the coin and you say to a high level jiu-jitsu guy yeah but with my shin and i can crack your head it's like Guys, take it easy, relax. It's not a foot measuring contest. Right. Do what makes you happy, what keeps you healthy, and you know, and and live your life and and just have fun. And, so, it, and it's time. Like, who has all that time? Like to commit to like it's exactly. hard enough trying to learn you, one you, style. You, you want to? I mean, everyone has work or studies and family life, right? So if you have X amount of time to practice your martial arts, really dive into it, really get into depths. Like even myself to this day, whenever I practice, I really want to try and get the most out of it, really try to perfect each thing that I'm doing because 
it may sound cliche, but I do really want to be better than what I was last week. Yeah. Yep. You know, and... Do you find the more you practice, your perception of how to do something evolves? Like a- time, in the, time in training? 100%. 100%. Have you noticed something, guys? You know, MMA and everything is very popular now for years. But the top MMA guy goes to train jiu-jitsu with a jiu-jitsu master. Yes. And let's say the Machados or any other. And what do they do? What do they specialize in? And what do they train and teach? Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. One martial art. That's right. Yeah. So then, oh, now I'm going to go and work on my striking. They go to a Muay Thai guy and he specializes in that and that's what he does. I see myself like those guys. You know, because I want to be the specialist that right. you come to, right, add, to, yeah. to, to add or to learn or whatever it is that I'm offering. Um, because, you know, these guys like that dad that I mentioned before that wasn't making inquiry. That's just because most people want to brag or want to wear the, the gear showing that they're this and that they're mm. that. But really, I mean... And do you really know it? You, yeah that, like that, do you really like you go to a school like that and you say i do boxing do you really know the science of boxing i think of like you know famous boxers they've been doing it since they were four years old and that's all they did mayweather's dad and uncle were coaching him these guys are boxing since they can stand like right. my kids they, they're doing wing chun since they could literally stand yeah. and you know them both since they were born yeah right that's that's it that's there's no secret that's it you put time effort discipline training and hard work and that's how you get to the highest level that also makes me think a lot of students come and go and you know they do the system for you know let's say three weeks or four months and they can't actually master the techniques and they don't think the system is effective that, yeah, that's another that, issue with it too they haven't and then they gone cross through train. yeah they haven't gone through the process like because it would be unfair like now 2023 the methodology of teaching has evolved and it's different it's not like in the old days like you you want to learn uh you think this isn't effective then in, back in the day would be like okay so why don't you and you you know try it out and see if what we do is effective or not and then you just go for a couple rounds and then yeah. you'll see in 20 seconds this this does work. Exactly. It, it is what it's meant to be. But nowadays, you, you can't do that. So now it's like step by step and just be careful. And here's the ice pack. And right. So it, that process takes a bit of time. And you have to, I guess, work with that new person uh, if they have that challenging mindset of, you know, usually you see that with the younger blokes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, um, I was about to say something. Uh, a while back, I had yeah uh, a lady, right, middle age. She came in, and and she was also like, we usually ask people, have you done martial arts before, and how for how long? And she was like, yes, I've done the typical boxing, jujitsu, kickboxing, and this and that. And I was like, oh wow, I like excellent. How long did you do that for? Five weeks. <laughs> Five weeks. Okay, where? At the USC gym at Fountain Gate, which, by the way, closed down. Right. Uh, but then, yeah, of course. So you look at their timetable, two hours a week of this, two hours a week of that. So then the person who is a member, they'll do, you know, 45 minutes of this, 45 minutes of that. And come on, guys, that's... Yeah, and then that's not, that's it's not like, the, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do this today, so I'll do more of this, and then I'll do that. And there's so many gaps. It's like learning to play an instrument. Yeah. But it, it I you just... You know, you, I'm going to do half an hour guitar, then I'm going to do, yeah. you know, piano and whatever, accordion. Um, there are only a few people out there that are yeah, multi-instrumentalists, like... I can print, play every Like a prince, you yeah. know? And uh, these musicians are geniuses and they've been working on their art form for... Since they were kids. Decades. You you can't jump into the same realm of someone like that if you're going to be spending, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes doing something. It it just doesn't work that way. I just got reminded of a story of a martial artist that came into the school. We were... And you guys know the story, but I'll share it. 
we were getting ready for a sparring session and I was there early and I was just stretching and this guy came in and he looked pretty, like he looked like he knew something, so he's just, you know, moving around. And I asked him, oh, you know, do you train, like have you trained before? And he looked at me and he said, um, yeah, I train street. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, like, you know. And I swear, like we just would do it, we were doing the warm up and he was, he was huffing and puffing, <laughs> so. Professional street fighter. Yeah, <laughs> that's just the other style. <laughs> so, yeah. To to wrap up this episode, now I'm not against people practicing, you know, multiple styles. If if, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. But if you want to get effective, good, and really master a system, even if you don't train its entire curriculum, but whenever you're working on it, just make sure you put some time and effort and really don't just train that style, study it. Yeah. You know, the ins and outs and the why and, uh, and make it work for you because that's another thing. How athletic are you? Um, how quickly do you learn? Like I was saying the children in my kids' class the other day, how fast do you fill up your cup? Is it drip by drip, right? Do you just put it underneath a tap and it fills up quickly. We all take different amounts of time to learn something, but that doesn't mean you can't stay there long enough to fill up your cup. Yeah. Yeah. It's just patience. Just work on it. It's and that don't growth get, growth mindset. And don't compare yourself to others. Yeah. Because, you know, if you learn quicker than than I do, then excellent. Good for you. I'm happy for you. But that doesn't mean I can't catch up to you. I yeah. will. Sooner or later, I'll get there. And I believe that's the right mindset to have when learning, in this case, applied wing. And that's it. what we always talk about is having that hustle, just working at it. And it's just, you know, fa famous sports teams, that's their mantra. Like when um, San Antonio were winning, when they won all those championships, they used to say it was pounding the rock, just constantly chipping away. And... Um, you know, it's, the, it's just working on all those. The fundamentals are the core, and then you build on that, and you get the momentum, and you'll keep going. It's simple. It's not easy, no. but it's simple. Yeah. The process is simple. Yeah. Show up, do your thing. Work on it. Work on it. And that's it. One thing at a time, and you can get there. Yeah. So, everyone watching and listening to us, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, I know I have. Uh, so that's it for today. Brendan, Stefan, thanks guys for joining me. Thanks, Sifu. Thanks, Sifu. And uh, that's it for today, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Okay, guys. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. There's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.